in a voice in my hand. A thriller by Charlotte Hastings, specially written for Dame Flora and for this occasion. The play also stars Marius Goring. The setting is the French Riviera, and the time, the present. A voice in my hand. Seraphine. Seraphine, are you on the terrace? Yes, madame. My compliments to Monsieur Plonplon, and please really make less noise. <laughs> yes, madame, of course. No, no, plon, plon, to here. Back to the kitchen. Go and wait for Bruno. Shoo, shoo. Wait for Bruno. He has gone now, madame. He's a clever dog. He understands both French and English. And there's an equal nuisance in both. Oh, so you are back. The week has gone too quickly. Seraphine, is it eight o'clock? No, madame. The fingers of the moon have not yet touched the pine trees. Fingers of the moon? Must you always give a fancy answer to a plain question? My father is a poet. Your father keeps a bistro. It is a good bistro, and he's a good poet. He likes me to make pictures with words. And dress like something out of a comic opera. <laughs> that blouse is barely decent. Bruno likes it. For him, a woman must always look attractive. He says it is her second most important natural function. I need not ask what he considers to be her first. I shall be very happy to explain it to you, if you wish. Don't be impertinent. I shall speak to madame. She will not listen. We are pleasant together. I make her laugh. Do not argue with me. I wish you had not come back. Oh, please. Are you two quarrelling already? Oh, madame. Oh. No. What is the matter? Why do you both stare? Oh, the dress! The dress! <laughs> Does it look well, then? Oh, madame, you are beautiful. And you, Collie, do you approve? No, of course she does not. Seraphine? <laughs> now she is back, she will put on a starched cap and starched face and give you pills you do not need. Seraphine, a... you must not speak to Miss Collie like that. I've told you before that I do not like it. I'm sorry. Now fetch two of those white roses for the table. Hurry, or Monsieur will be here before we're ready. Oh, yes, madame. Oh, is it not romantic? <laughs> I'm glad to see you back, Collie. Don't take too much notice of Seraphine. She's very young and sometimes silly. And she makes you laugh. Yes, and for that I'm grateful. Come now, what do you think of the table? Does it look bridal and intimate? It is very pleasing. Good. Now, come into the bedroom and talk to me while I finish dressing. How was your holiday? Mrs. Beauregard. Yes? Uh, the, the dress. It is my wedding dress. I know, but... And I'm wearing it for my husband on our 30th anniversary. Is it not excellent that it still fits? Well, are you telling me that I'm too old and withered to wear it? Oh, no, uh, I was perhaps hasty. Oh, come now. Tonight is to be so joyful. Do you realize I have not seen my husband for six weeks? Now he is coming for a month. We shall be together. You mustn't spoil things. And you must not overdo things. Your leg is not completely better. And you must not get too excited. Excited? I am elated. So tell me. Shall I wear the pearls or the silver chain? There was a maid sat on a stone. She said, why am I here alone? Good evening. Ah! Oh, Julius. Oh, not you. Oh, no, not you. What is the matter, you stupid girl? Oh, do not come near. Shaking and crossing oh, herself oh. as if I were the devil. Oh, go away. Oh, what shall I do? Answer your question or obey your order? Which, incidentally, you have no right to give. While Monsieur is away, I have the right to protect Madame. Protect from what? From you. You have the evil eye. <laughs> My dear Seraphine, for the daughter of a very modern poet, you have some extremely old-fashioned ideas. 
There is nothing old-fashioned about evil. I know what I know. Then what is that? You sold a green china cat to the bank manager, and his wife died two weeks later. He bought the cat to amuse her. She'd been dying for 12 months. And the Echnar's child who choked on a silver rattle? I can only sell a rattle. I cannot keep it out of the child's oh, mouth. Oh, yours. Oh, don't be a fool, Seraphine. <laughs> Next, you will say I caused Madame to fall on the rocks five miles away and six long months ago. Keep away from Madame. The doctors have mended her head, and she is perfect. It is a miracle. That is not what they say in the village. They say she has fits of violence, and Monsieur will not have her back in England. Wicked lies! Monsieur has come to fetch her home. He will be here by eight. He's here already. Oh. He brought me with him. I do not believe it. He stopped at my shop and picked me up. I am here by appointment. It's a business matter. Oh, no. No, do not dare go into the villa. Oh, God must help me. I will not allow it. What the devil is happening? Oh, Monsieur, Monsieur. Seraphine. Oh, wait. The girl is mad. Be quiet. What is on me, sir? Seraphine, Seraphine, control yourself. Do you want to strangle me? Bruno, get it away. And that dog. I will do it. Bruno, stand back. Now, we will go into the kitchen and the dog at once. Or I will throw cold water over both of you. Leave it to me, monsieur. Look after my dog. Oh, thank God for that. What on earth possessed her? <laughs> She's in some fear of me, monsieur. Apparently she thinks I am blood relation to the devil. I am sorry, Mr. Julius. If I might ask you to wait in the little study. Well, surely, monsieur, whatever you say. Miss Collier will bring you a glass of wine. Bruno, take the cases to the guest rooms. Yes, monsieur. You may safely leave it all to me. Oh. Peace at last. Anna, darling. How are you? Why is Bruno taking cases to the guest rooms? We have visitors. We have what? Sit down. Let me explain. Oh. No, give me your hands. And do not tremble. <laughs> you must be calm. I'm perfectly calm. Here in this chair. <laughs> now a cushion. So. And we will have a drink. There. Is that better? Thank you. So, say. On this evening of all evenings, you're glad to see me. In the arms of my maid? Oh, no. The silly girl. She was apparently terrified of Mr. Julius and flung herself on me, demanding protection. Is Mr. Julius also a guest? No, no. He is here on a very different matter. Then why... Darling, you must let me explain. We don't want to spoil this evening, do we? Oh, come, come now, don't cry. I brought Antony. Antony? Does that mean... And Rosalind, you don't know her. They're, they're recently engaged. Antony engaged? Good heavens, where are they? Oh, Bruno's taken them up the front staircase to their rooms. But why have I not been told beforehand? Well, it happened so quickly, there was hardly time. How much time to pick up a telephone? I didn't want to phone in case it disturbed Disturbed? You. Has this not disturbed me more? You promised me this month together, alone. I've thought of nothing else for six long weeks. Darling, please listen. A big case has come up. Oh. It's tremendously important. You may have heard of it, even over here. The Whitgift affair. I do not remember it. Sometimes it tires me to read the papers. If I am to come here at all, it must be a working holiday. Oh, dear. I am briefed for the defence, <laughs> with Anthony as my junior. We brought Rosalind because she is young and charming... And we'll be company for you. I only want your company. Well, I'll give you all the time I can spare. How much will that be? No, don't tell me. I've known it all before. You'll be absorbed in a mountain of papers. The telephone will be ringing forever. Anna. And when I speak to you, you will look at me and see only the twelve faces of the jury. Well, you've not minded in the past. I was in London with you, entertaining for you. I had some part of it. And will again when you're well. I am well now. Ah, oh, here they come. Now, I will look after them while you go and change. Change? Well, darling, that white thing, negligee or whatever it is. Yes. Uh, charming and very feminine, but hardly the thing for dinner. I'm going to find something else. Anna! Anna, dear. Oh, oh, it's so good to see you. How are you now? Uh, you look marvellous. And this is Rosalind. Good evening. Anthony, my dear boy, congratulations. And Rosalind. 
How pretty you are, my dear, and how young. <laughs> how do you do, Mrs. Beauregard? But if you could call me Ros, most people do. And you must call me Anna. Now sit down and let us get to know each other. And these are for you, for oh. me and Tony, with our congratulations. And our love. Oh, thank you. How beautiful. White roses. Uh, Charles, will you ring for Seraphine? Mm -hmm. Today, everyone is sending me white roses. <laughs> to celebrate 30 wonderful years. Yes. Madame Rang? Uh, no doubt for Seraphine, but, but as this silly girl is still red-nosed with crying... Uh... Thank you, Bruno. Ask you to put these in water. I will sit with myself. And therefore it will be achieved with taste. And, uh, Bruno. Uh, yes, madame. On the dinner table are two white roses. Serving, my know. Ask her to remove them. I will see to it, madame. Is uh, Mr. Julius still waiting in the study? Uh, he is quite comfortable with a glass of wine in the company of Mademoiselle Colley. <laughs> And myself, I would not particularly relish that, but he is said to be a philosopher. Yes, and yes. yes. Uh, ask him to come here, please. At once, monsieur. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, where did you get him? Did you ever see such shoulders? He's gorgeous. He's indispensable. Drives the car, cooks like a dream, digs the garden, and in his spare time, makes love to Seraphine. <laughs> <laughs> he will eventually marry. Lucky Seraphine. In ten years' time, she will have five children, lost her figure and most of her teeth, and Bruno will have a mistress in the next village. A young girl with a slim waist who is not afraid to laugh. Anna. Monsieur Emory. Oh, come out on the terrace, Mr. Julius. Madame, I felicitate you. Are you now ready? Ready. For your anniversary present. You've already sent me white roses. Seraphine thought it most romantic. No more than roses. Now, you wrote me... But at last you could discard that ugly steel crutch and use an ordinary stick. And not that for much longer. So you shall have one which is special and unusual oh. and gives you pleasure. Mr. Julius has brought a selection and you may make your choice. From that bundle? We will unroll it on this table, madame, if we may. So, oh. you will see I have brought the best. A half a dozen. One, uh. two, three, four... Five, six. Seven. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. I seem to have brought one extra, but no matter. Show me. Let us see, then. Number one. Observe, madame. A good, strong shaft. And at the top, a head. Oh, look, it's a little dog. A French bulldog. Is his expression not most amiable? Take him in your hand, madame. Now you are walking along, and suddenly you press forward one of his ears, yes, and no, 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 la la. His <laughs> tongue comes out. Again, madame, one ear or the other, it does not matter. Lulu, out comes the red tongue, and his eyes roll. Is he not droll? Oh, it is a child's toy. Show me something else. Poor dog, go and stand in the corner. Madame does not like you. Now, perhaps this. Again, a strong shaft. And the top, an amethyst, shaped like a thistle. And the gilt leaves. Try it, madame. Oh, now as so much detail is not comfortable in the hand. And it's too short. Uh, what else? Um, this, this is nice and sensible. A plain crook handle and incised all down with vine leaves. Let me lean on it. Uh, yes, the length is right. Uh, Mr. Julius. Madame. That last one, number seven, you are wrapping it up out of sight. It will not please, madame. How do I know if I have not seen it? With regret, madame, it is not for sale. Then why did you bring it? I told my assistant to pack a selection. This was included by mistake. I should like to see it. If madame would excuse me. Charles, I insist on seeing it. Yes, yes, don't excite yourself. I'm not excited. I merely want to see a stick. If you please, Mr. Julius, if madame wishes... It can surely do no harm. Very well, monsieur. But remember, I have made a protest. Therefore... Yes. Indeed. I do see. What do you see? Plain shaft. Ebony, I should think, and very strong. And a handle. A carved head. Ivory, is it not? A skull. Horrible. Those dead black stones in the eye sockets. What are they? 
onyx. Opals, monsieur. Opals? I thought they were... Black opals. Yes, they're very rare. Is that why you will not sell it? I have my reasons. Uh, come, let us rip it. Just a moment. Madame. As you took it from me, moved it, I, I thought for a moment... I saw the eyes glow a greenish red. Oh, darling, you imagine. I did not imagine anything. Well, Mr. Julius. All opals have a certain water content which may sometimes catch the light. It is a simple matter of refraction. That is the one I want. Again, with respect, madame. Charles, tell Mr. Julius this is the one I want. But if... You are giving me a present. I will have that and no other. It is not for madame. Why? For one thing, uh, it is macabre. That is true. It is quite ugly. And look, it has no proper grip. It will slip about like a polished egg. My fingers hold it perfectly. Roz, see how it fits my hand. It is a little frightening. Frightening? A piece of beautifully carved ivory. Anthony. If I am truthful, I wouldn't want to own it. Why are you all against me? This is the one I want. Oh, darling. And, and I will have it. May we at least look at the other three? Please. I would like to see them. Oh, forgive me. I was too emphatic. Of course we will look. So long as it is understood. Mr. Julia? Yes, monsieur? You know madame has been ill. It is a matter of nerves. So I understand, monsieur. If she does not have this stick, she may work herself into a rage and do some harm. Could you not reconsider? No, monsieur. I will pay you... Anything. It is not a question of money. Then for heaven's sake, what is the mystery? Mr. Julius, I really do beg you. Monsieur, you are very much in earnest. I am indeed. I will not sell the stick. But... But I will make an arrangement. Yes? Madame may have the stick on loan. No charge. No money may be involved. She may have it until she no longer needs it or desires it. And when that time comes... Then? Then it shall be a return to me. This seems a... A strange, somewhat irritating business. Nevertheless, monsieur, it is the arrangement. Then I accept it, and thank you. One last condition. Madame is not to know. She is to think I bought it? It will be best, monsieur, I do assure you. This one. Very well, then. Anna, Anna, my darling. Yes. Mr. Julius has capitulated. The stick is yours. Oh, <laughs> splendid. Thank you. Thank you both. This is a most beautiful stick. Mm. Mr. Julius, where do you think it came from? And has it any age? Oh, thank goodness, that's settled. I wish she'd not bought it. Oh, but why? She was determined. The skull? It's the classic horror symbol. It is the classic horror cliche. So thank you again, Mr. Julius. And good night. Good night, madame. May you walk with God. I shall walk with your stick. No doubt God will guide us both. That we must... Pray for. Monsieur, Mademoiselle. Good night. Good night. Uh, Madame. Uh, yes, Madame. We have set two more places. Uh, Seraphine wishes to know when you will come to table. Is there any hurry for a few moments? Uh, no. Uh, 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 but uh, Madame has asked to start with the little souffle pancakes Monsieur oh. enjoys so much. <laughs> and they must come straight from the stove or uh, poof, huh? <laughs> they are no longer souffle. Well, <laughs> certainly, Bruno. They must not be poof. No. <laughs> we will come at once. Oh, thank you, Madame. And shall I put on some music, huh? Very softly, at the back of the talking. Indeed, yes, Bruno. You think of everything. Oh, uh, no? one does one's poor best, madame. So, shall we all go in? You said you wished to change. Change? Oh. <laughs> Why should I do that? Anthony, give me your arm. But of course, Anne. And Roz, go with Charles. Yes, all Charles, right. come along with him. Oh, this is to be a splendid night. And I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. Throw that towel and I'll dry your back. I'll do it for me. Tony? Yes, my darling. Do we have to stay a month? 
Of course we have to stay. For one thing, during the last week, it's the local wine fete. The Feast of Bacchus. Have you ever seen one? No, but I... I utterly refuse to let you miss it. And the other thing, I'm here on business, working with leading council and our head of chambers. Tell me about Anna. Oh, you know everything already. What do I know? That she's Charles's wife for 30 years? But 18 months ago, she had a sudden illness. A nervous breakdown. There's no mystery. And he bought this villa where she could recover. Only she had an accident and fell. That's it, then. What else could I have told you? That when I met her, I might be afraid. <laughs> afraid of Anna? Ross, don't be so ridiculous. Last night, at dinner, did you notice her dress? Hmm. That white thing. Perhaps a little dated. Tony, I can't help feeling there's something wrong. <laughs> you had too much champagne last night. <laughs> now stop all this nonsense. We've been given a whole long, glorious day together. Please, would you just <laughs> tell me what... Hold up your foot. There's sand between your toes. Shall I brush it out? <laughs> or are you ticklish? <laughs> Tony, no, Tony, please. Stop it, Tony. More coffee? No, no, thank you, darling. Oh, you know, it is very civilised breakfast on a terrace overlooking the sea. You should do it more often with me. Oh, I wish I could. A great deal to get through this morning. You have Anthony to help? Well, I've said they may have their first day together. After all, it is Sunday. Must I spend it alone, then? You have Colin. Well, she has gone to church in the town, as usual. I've lent her the car. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. It'll have to be Seraphine. Please, may I not have this Sunday with you? I have a mass of papers to prepare. And tomorrow, and the day after. Well, it won't matter... I don't start work for another hour. Mm. Shall we take a little stroll? How far can you walk now? Last night, you did not comment when I walked upstairs. With the help of your stick. I see you have it here. <laughs> Do you like it better in the daylight? <laughs> it certainly does not look so sinister. <laughs> <laughs> Will you need my arm? Only to be companionable. Good. Have you yet realised how well I am? It is quite remarkable. So I will come back to England with you. Well, we shall have to think about it. Why? I tell you, I am well. Well, let's wait. Just, just a little. Monsieur. Monsieur. Seraphine, go away. Can't you see we are talking? It is the telephone for Monsieur. It is most important. Oh. from England. Oh, damn. Oh, I should have known this would happen. Hey, darling... Excuse me. Probably yeah. our solicitors. Seraphine, you must stay and talk to me. Miss Collie is at church, and I don't want to sit alone till lunchtime. Oh, madame, it is most unfortunate. It is Bruno. Oh, he has such a temper. I must help him all day or he cannot manage. Nonsense. Bruno always manages. Oh, but madame, we did not think to have two more guests. Um, Bruno says monsieur is important in his friend. They are les avocats, the men of law. Seraphine. And you yourself have ordered extra meals with special dishes. I asked for pleasant food. I didn't order banquets. You must get extra help from the village. Oh, that is being arranged, but not until tomorrow. Today's Sunday. So everyone keeps telling me. Oh, madame, would you like Plon Plon for company? He is in the kitchen. Thank you, no. He's young and restless and will want me to throw stones for him. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah, of course he is. Excuse me, I must go and see what he wants. Bruno, my Damn. I looked forward to this, and now I sit here more alone than ever. No, be fair. If he hadn't brought this work, he couldn't have come at all. Oh, God, shall I ever lose this turmoil in my mind? Try to be fair and tolerant, but how can I forget? And who understands? 
It must be firm and controlled. Perhaps if I walked a little, I should feel more calm. Oh, I've dropped my stick. I wonder if, if I can manage it. There's no one to call. Bending is still painful. There. I must catch my breath. One should not grow old. It's not fair to be alone and so unhappy. And what are you grinning at, you ugly thing? Yes, you are an ugly thing. When the light catches your eyes, they flash red. And what use are you, anyway? I could walk without you if I tried. Nobody wants me to buy you. What made me do it? My eyes flash. And a shiver went down your spine. Uh, who, who spoke? I did. I can't see anyone. Here. In your hand. You? Why not? Either I'm going mad or it's a trick. Let me assure you that you are not mad. Then it is a trick. It must be. Some mechanical device. I started it when I banged on the ground. Where's the switch? Some little wire. No switch. No device. Sit down. I will explain. This is unbelievable. I'm not hearing anything. You are hearing me in your head. I'm speaking only to you. Now, sit down. And let us make things clear. I'm... You're shaking. Uh... Lean on me. And I will lower you gently into your chair. There. Comfortable? Yes. Then listen. First, there is no need to be afraid. You are not mad. And I've told you that you hear me only in your head. Then no one else can... No one. This is between you and me. If I'm not insane... Why do I hear you? You only think you do. Then this is all a dream. No. It is entirely simple. You've been for some time under much stress. Yes, oh yes. Your brain is motivated by electric cells. Sometimes when stress is great, the impulses which control those cells go deeper. Are you understanding this? I think so. Then you fell, struck your head, and things became disturbed still further. For a while, you are able to know more than ordinary people. Do you not think, perhaps, you are a little lucky? How long will this go on? No longer than you wish. I can control it? Of course. You do not speak to me unless you want to. And if you do not speak, I shall not answer. You're telling me that you are only in my mind? I am you. Your thoughts your feelings. Then why do you speak to me in a man's voice? Because you prefer it. Prefer it? Consider now. You are surrounded by women. Uh, that nurse, worthy but stolid as a rice pudding. Poor thing, she can't help it. Nevertheless, she is of incomparable dullness. And then the maid, a starry-eyed romantic. She drives one mad with her incessant chatter. <laughs> and now this new girl. Russell. Who is afraid of you. Afraid? Can you mean? Correction. She is in awe of you. Then I must put her at her ease. Is it not more pleasant to talk with a man, to be amused yeah. and flattered, and even a little desired? <laughs> Why not? At least I shall not be lonely. Not even if they neglect you all day. And think. When they do gather round and fuss and treat you like an invalid or a child... Which I am not. You will smile sweetly and send them away. <laughs> oh, I promise you. We may have great sport together. I do believe we shall. What shall we do first? You may as well make a start. I should like to do something slightly outrageous. To give them just a little joke. Then lean on me... And we will go for a walk. That will not worry them. It depends how far you go and where. So far, I haven't walked further than the edge of the sea. If you could choose, where would you like to go? 
I would... I would... I'd like to go down to the village and into the bistro, which is kept by Seraphine's father. Excellent. And sit at a table among the others and order a large glass of brandy. <laughs> See their faces <laughs> as they watch you drink it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I couldn't go so far. It is barely a mile. And mostly uphill. I am here to help you. Hold me firmly. Oh, no, I can't... Stand up. Come now. Stand. That's right. A journey starts when you take one step. Take it. I... You took it as you spoke. Now we shall go. One step after another. It's easier and easier. Trust yourself to me. Oh, stop, please. Do not force me. The hill was steeper than I thought. Look, there is the bistro. I have changed my mind. I have no objection if you wish to do so. I will go into the church. It's much nearer. I said I will go into the church. I do not think it is a good idea. Let us turn back. I cannot go back without a rest. I've made up my mind I'm going to the church. Strange. I don't seem to move. You're not helping me. I lean on you and have no support. Ah! Oh, I've got my stick. What shall I do? Madame, you are distressed. Oh. And may I help? Oh, Father Martin, thank you. I've, I've dropped my stick. Oh, I will pick it up. Oh, I was a slippery thing. He does not want to stay in my hand. There. I don't want to drop it in the church. Prop it there against the wall and give me your arm. A moment, then. Ah, we will leave it there. Oh, I had not expected to see you here, madame. I did not know you were a Catholic. No, I'm not. Or, of course, this is St. Simeon's. But surely I can find God in your church as well as my own. Oh, of course, you are most welcome. May I sit with you? I am not taking the service this morning. You look more rested now. Yes, I enjoyed the service. It was very peaceful. And here is your stick. Oh, it really is most slippery to hold. I hope it gives you a proper grip. Is Monsieur Beauregard fetching you? No. They uh, don't know I've come. Oh, uh, shall I telephone the villa? No. Father Martin, might I ask you, would you take me in your car? If you have the time. Oh, Madame, I should be delighted. Mind it is an old car and battered. It would be the greatest kindness. Uh, then sit here quietly and I will fetch it to the door. Madame, may I ask? Yes, Father. I have a sense that you are troubled. While I was waiting for you just now, I found myself wishing I were a Catholic. Why? I could have made my confession to you, and you could have given me absolution. You could give me your confidence, and I could give you my blessing. Perhaps God would think I am too wicked. Ah, the everlasting arms have a wide circumference. Yes. Oh, Father Martin, I am torn apart. I've lived with this so long and tried so hard to fight it. Stop fighting. And God will answer. I know the answer. I know what I must do and I cannot do it. What must you do, madame? Forgive. Ah. That is always difficult. Forgive whom? Someone who has hurt me so bitterly. But I feel I'm destroyed. Oh, madame... Is it perhaps only your pride that has been destroyed? Oh, so much more. My love and my trust. If you give that trust to God, it will be restored. I can only tell you I'm afraid that... Yes? That one day, I may be overcome by great darkness. 
Then you will pray for the light. I could not find the words. The words will come. Madame, listen to me. If ever this darkness should touch you, I promise, I promise you, as I hope one day to meet my saviour, that the words will come. Thank you. Ah, we are arrived. Oh, oh how beautiful the villa looks this morning. <laughs> no, do not move for a moment. Give me your hand. May you find strength and peace. Benedicat vos omnipotent Deus, et Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. You are cold in my hand this morning. Shall I warm you? You will only do so in your imagination. Surely it pleases you when I stroke your head. I cannot feel it. But by all means, do it if it gives you pleasure. You are bored, I think. A little. <laughs> After all yesterday's mm. excitement. <laughs> Quite a successful episode. Chaos. Nurse, white-faced as a mushroom. <laughs> and Seraphine screaming. Madame is gone, Madame is gone. <laughs> <laughs> and they couldn't scold because I brought Father Martin back to lunch. And poor Charles had to leave his precious papers and play host. I'm sorry about that. I didn't want to inconvenience him. Nonsense. When have you last enjoyed yourself so much? Not for many months. No doubt we shall think of something else. We've talked all the morning. Poor Collie is getting worried. She thinks I'm talking to myself. You sent her into the village to match some silks you do not want for a piece of embroidery you've no intention of working. <laughs> is that the fair Roz coming up from the sea? How easily she moves. No effort. I'm lame and stiff. In 50 years, you will both be dust together. Stop it, stop it. I will not talk to you. Roz! Rosalind, come here and sit with me. I would have come before. I thought you were asleep. Liar. She was avoiding you. Quiet. I beg your pardon. Oh, I'm sorry. Just for a second, my thoughts slipped. Sit down. Shall Seraphine bring us some coffee? Oh, no, thank you. She's watching her figure. Do be quiet. Anna? Anna, are you all right? Certainly. Tell me... Tell me about your day. Have you seen Antony since breakfast? Oh, no. They're both buried in papers. Maybe it won't always be like this. You mean when you are married? Yes. Tell her. I said I would not answer. I, I'm sorry. I don't understand. I, I spoke my thoughts again. Please take no notice. We were speaking about marrying, you and Antony. When will it be? Next spring, I think. Oh, it can be so beautiful in the spring. Fair daffodils that come before the swallow dares and take the winds of March with beauty. It's nearly two years since I've seen an English spring. May I come to your wedding? Oh, please. And see you both live happy ever after? <laughs> I hope so. Tell her, poor fool. Are you tired? You've gone silent. No, I was thinking... What were we talking about? My wedding. And that you'd come to wish as well. Now, hit home. To wish you... Go on. Go on. To wish you strength to face the disillusionment. Well done. Anna, what do you mean? You think you will be happy. Of course we shall. We're in love. And trust each other? Naturally. Then my heart aches for you. Why? You are so young. Are you a virgin? Oh. Please, I, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Why do you speak about disillusionment? It is inevitable. Listen, and I will tell you about a friend, a woman I once knew. Is it going to be a sad story? It is true. Don't you want to listen? I can see you want to tell me. For your own sake. Go on. Go on. This woman, she loved her husband greatly. Why shouldn't she? Or, or didn't he love her? Oh, yes, at first. 
But she was older and he was ambitious. So is Anthony. Is that such a bad thing? No, but she urged him on. She helped him with her money and with all her mind and all her heart. Well, then surely she was a good wife. Yes, but her love was fierce. He was her world. And as she grew less young, she began to look into her mirror with a sinking heart. I've already told you it was inevitable. He turned to someone else. A young girl. It was a tempestuous affair. What did she do? What would you have done in her place? Please, uh, let's not talk like this. It isn't pleasant. And I think it disturbs you. You asked me what she did, and I will finish. Please, Anna. Sit still and listen. She faced her husband. He admitted it. Admitted it and groveled. Oh, no. She saw the man she had put above all else, weep for his weakness, promise it was over. It had been tempestuous and was done forever. He took her in his arms and told her that he loved her. It was just one lapse. Surely she forgave him. Despised him. And has done so ever since. I wish you hadn't told me. It's a horrid story. Oh, there is still some hope in it. She tried to love him, to trust him, and was ill, and fought against him. Anna, please, Anna. But always will remember how he groveled. Better he had struck her. Uh, you're not well. I'll call Miss Collier. She's not here. Oh, I'm suddenly tired. Roz, you're a kind child to sit and talk to me. Uh, oh. Please go and ask Seraphine to keep the dog in order. He gives me a headache. I'll go at once. Uh, excuse me. Seraphine? Seraphine! That has shaken her. I should not have done it. Why should she not bleed a little? You have for many years. What am I to do? Tell me, what am I to do? What you most want to do. Go back to London. Charles does not seem to agree. You make me tired. Always what they want. We will do something you want. And we will now go and tell him. He is working. Is that sacred? Come now. And be careful. You must only answer me in your mind. Otherwise, they will think you're unbalanced. I am not unbalanced. I never have been. That's the way. So, up then. Oh. Lean on me. Carefully. We do not need to hurry. I think it is a mistake. If we put her in the witness box and risk cross-examination, why do you think she won't make a good witness? Because she's the only one who knows the truth. Mm. And the truth could be dangerous. Mm. Charles, I want to talk to you. It must it be now? Anthony will excuse us. Oh, uh, certainly. It's You'll Charles... find Roz in the kitchen. She's gone to take a message to Seraphine. Oh, very well. We'll make it half an hour. Thank you. Now, sit down, darling. What is this about? I'm coming back to England with you. If you don't want to take me with you, I should come alone. And I'm not sure... Here it's peaceful and you have no responsibilities. What will you do alone in the London house? Start putting it in order. I'll keep Collie for a while, perhaps. And there will be friends and entertaining. I shall soon be back in my old routine. Will you see Dr. Rochelle first? No, he is too cautious. I think you do not want me. Have you other things in mind? Anna, for God's sake... Is it always going to be like this? I made you a promise, and I have kept it. Good. Then it's settled. I will tell Collie. If you're really serious, then I must insist you see Dr. Rochelle before we leave. I will see him on the understanding that whatever he says, I shall go back. But... And if you will not take me, I shall make my own arrangements. I will telephone Dr. Rochelle. Oh, so many papers. Always so many papers. When is the case to be heard? At the end of next month. How long will it last? I think it will be protracted and difficult. I do not know how you can defend this monster. I thought you hadn't read about Seraphine it. Seraphine found me some old papers. When I think of what he has He's done... He's alleged to have done. It still makes me sick. Would it perhaps be better if 
You stayed here till it's over, and then I could come over and fetch you. And by then, something else will be occupying your mind. I will see you at dinner. By the way, why for the past few nights have you not shared my room? I work very late. I do not want to disturb you. I take sleeping pills. You are aware of that. I... Oh, it doesn't matter. Thank you for giving me some of your time. Seraphine? Seraphine? Yes, madame. Find Monsieur Anthony and tell him I've finished. Yes, madame. That did not go so well. Oh, how I hate myself. I mean to try. Each time I speak to him, I mean to be kind, loving, and I'm cruel. It is understandable. Why? You are older than your husband. That was explained. She was afraid of Mr. Julius. Are you stupid, too? I will not believe it. Besides, she's engaged to Bruno. Do you suppose that would worry him? Oh, no. And I... now, Charles sleeps in his dressing room. So very convenient. I will not think of it. The facts are there. Ignore them if you wish. What am I to do? We will think of something. Quickly. Not for the moment. The inestimable Miss Collier is bearing down upon us. Oh. <laughs> really, confess it. Is she not exactly like a rice pudding? Not made with freckles. <laughs> ah, that is a merry sound. And have we had a nice rest? When do we ever do anything else? I bought the silks. I was able to match them all. Isn't that splendid? Canvas. Canvas? I beg your pardon, Mrs. Beauregard. Did you say canvas? I... I... I didn't think you'd want me to bring anything but the silks. What use are the silks alone? I took it for granted you would bring a canvas with the pattern already stamped on it. Can no one ever do anything I ask? Well done. I'm very sorry. I will go back. No, tomorrow will do. It will not take long. I said tomorrow. Oh, for heaven's sake, stop that damn dog. It's making my head swim. Seraphine, Seraphine. I will go. Lie down. You shall go straight to the veterinary surgeon. You may have the car, Bruno. Yes. Go with him, Seraphine, and see the bill is sent to me. Oh, shall Ros and I take? Yes, we could. Uh... No, Bruno will go. Hurry now. Uh, one moment. Uh, Madame? Yes, Bruno. Uh, your stick. It flew out of your hand when you... No, no, take it away, take it away. Anna, it's darling. I will not have it in the house. Now, calm yourself, you'll be ill. Send it back to the shop, back to the shop. Well, all right, darling, all right. You shall go back in the morning. No, he must go now. Get it away. Bruno. Bruno, madame, take it with you. Do you hear? Now. Monsieur, do as madame says. Leave it at the shop. Never want to see it again. <laughs> Ross, don't look so stricken. Oh, Tony. For a moment she looked like a devil. I want to go home. You can't do that. Charles would be offended. I'll go into the town and send myself a telegram. Charles is my chief, and we have important work on hand. You must try to understand how to cope with a small social contretemps. It will often be necessary when we're married. Anthony, do you really love me? Now, what has that to do with all this? Everything. Then it's my turn to say I don't understand. 
Very well. I'll stay. But we must talk later in London because... <laughs> because you're an imaginative little idiot. And first, I'm going to kiss you. So. And then, we're going to find a drink. Come in. Oh, Bruno. You're working very late, monsieur. Uh, how is madame? Sleeping. Oh. Uh, she's been sedated. What about the dog? Oh, his leg is bruised. <laughs> He's not serious. Oh, good. I'm sorry about Seraphine. I've, I've told her not to bring this dog again. <laughs> she's very stupid. I can see I must beat her more often. Beat? <laughs> Surely you're joking. No, oh, not at all, monsieur. When she becomes too stupid, I beat her. Quite often. But do not worry. She has a way of stopping it if I go too far. Uh -huh. She bites me. Good God. And then? Oh, then we kiss and make love. <laughs> and all is well until it becomes necessary to beat her again. And so it goes on. That is the way of it. Yes, that is life. And do you intend to marry her? Huh? As soon as I can buy this bistro from her father. Oh, you are ambitious. Oh, this is a good thing makes a purpose for the days. As for the nights, there is Seraphine. Bruno, <laughs> you're incorrigible. Now, I must work. Uh, thank you for letting me know about the dog. Uh, one other thing, monsieur. Yeah? I have brought back the stick. You have... The shop is closed for two days. I thought I should bring back the stick. Madame may change her mind. Uh, I do not think she will. Uh, take it back with you and give it to Mr. Julius when he returns. I would... Rather not, monsieur. I think it is valuable and... Uh... Very well. Put it in the hall cupboard and collect it later. Uh, that would be better, monsieur. Uh, and Bruno, it might be as well not to mention it, madame. I understand, monsieur. Good night. Good night, Bruno. Uh, thank you. Now, where was I? Oh, Yes. And then his lordship will say three words. Consider your verdict. Three simple words. But the issue is not so simple. It is something infinitely more terrible. A living death. A death in life. Well, no, it's too melodramatic. I'm too tired. Tomorrow. Oh, Collie, still up? I have just looked in on Mrs. Beauregard. She seems a little restless, but... Uh... I think I'll sleep in her room tonight. Oh, thank you. If you need I'll me... I'll call. Good night. Uh, good night. I didn't mean it. I'm afraid something is wrong. I'm afraid. Charles. Mm -hmm. uh, yes? Anna? What is it? Are you dreaming? Dreaming? Charles. Charles, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hold me. Please hold me. Of course, my darling. There. You are very drowsy. Go back to sleep. Charles, I'm sorry. So sorry. There's no need. I've been so cruel. But no more, Charles. I love you. Oh, Anna, darling. Let it be as it always was. Hold me like you used to. Yes. Rest now. Just rest here. Rest. Rest. Everything is right again. Just rest. Anna! Anna! Who calls? No one, darling. There's no one here but us. Someone called. Anna! Anna, come to me. I must go. I must go. Where are you? I'm here. Hold on to me. Anna. No, I please. must find it. I must find it. You're wandering. It's the drugs. Lie down, dearest. Wait a moment. 
No, I know. Likewise, Jay. I'll be back. Good. Good. Now you can hear Anna. But you are gone. Gone away. I'm here. In the house. Come and find me. I do not want... You know you cannot do without me. Who will you talk to? Who will give you strength? Anna. Anna. Where are you? Where are you? Downstairs. Come to me. You must come to me. Rest. Rest. I want to rest. You cannot rest without me. Think. Think how we laugh and talk together. Do you want to be alone again, Anna? Alone? How can I find you? I will guide you. Now, out of bed. I can't. You can. You must. Quickly, quickly, or they will stop you. I cannot. The stairs. Hold to the banisters. Quickly, Anna. Quickly. I'm coming. I'm coming. Yes? It's Mrs. Beauregard. Can you come quickly? Uh, one moment. I think she's having a nightmare. I can't control her. Oh, my God. Look, she's crawling down the stairs. Anna! Mrs. Beauregard, it is mine. I must find it. Let me go. Let me go. Now, Mrs. Beauregard... Let go of the rail. Anna, we don't want to wake the house. Give it to me. Find it for me. I want my stick. My stick. Get it, Anna. Bruno took it back to the shop. He brought it back. It's down in the cupboard. Find it for heaven's sake. That's right. Yes, Anna. Yes. Is something wrong? Uh, nothing. Anna's had a nightmare. Go back to bed. Can, can I have... Just, just go back to bed. Here you are. Give it to me. There. Here it is. Now, come with us. Help me, Connie. Yes. We are together. We must always be together. Together. Look, the eyes are flashing. Anna. Oh, my friend. Anna. My friend. It was horrible. Horrible. She was on the stairs with Charles. They were struggling. Her eyes were wild. Ross. And I said, I said, is anything wrong? And Charles said, nothing. Anna has had a nightmare. Go back to bed. And then Miss Collier brought that stick. And old Tony, she snatched it and crooned over it. Roz, she had a nightmare. Charles told me about it. It was the upset over the dock. Tony, I must go home. You're going to be a sensible girl. Dr. Rochelle is coming tomorrow, and everything will depend on what he says. Dr. Rochelle? Who's... The neurosurgeon who's been looking after her. It had already been arranged. Can't we t- Darling Roz, we're all going to behave normally and, and wait for Dr. Rochelle. Not be delayed. Calm yourself. All is arranged. Suppose I do something wrong. You will do everything superbly. You look splendid. That dress has color and dignity. Who did your hair? Collie. Well, well, the rice pudding actually has taste. <laughs> <laughs> now sit back and be at peace. Could we go through it just once more? There is no necessity. But yes, if it sets your mind at rest. Well? When uh, they arrive... I stand up and walk to the balustrade. Correction. Oh, what have I forgotten? To leave me leaning against the back of your chair. And remember, do not take me into lunch. You will walk upright, firmly and unaided. I had rather you were with me at the table. Nonsense. Am I a fork to put the meat in your mouth? Oh, don't speak to me like that. If that is your attitude, we will not talk at all. Oh, I thought your eyes flashed then. Are you angry? Don't withdraw from me now. It's so important. Speak to me, please. Very well. But you must compose yourself. If you appear flushed and flustered, all will be ruined. I'm... Now, once more, then. Get up. Without me. Move forward. And wait. A gracious gesture of greeting, not as if you had a flag in your hand. Again. Uh Uh-huh. That's better. And then I go... Slowly, slowly, with poise. To the steps. And when they come up, I hold up my hand and say... Go on. I say, 
Dr. Rochelle. How nice to see you. Pause while he kisses your hand. Will you have an aperitif? Charles, ask Bruno to bring the tray. Well done. And after lunch, when you have charmed and captivated him, you will discover me and say... Oh, look. I had completely forgotten my stick. Thus proving that you can walk without it. Which is true. I no longer need your support. Then you may as well return me to the shop. Not that kind of support, and you know it. What is the matter with you today? I have not known you be so sharp before. You bore me with your lack of confidence. How many times more must I tell you that all will be well? I'm sorry. I will... Oh, here's the car. Ready, then. Now you are already standing. Good. Turn slowly, slowly, and wave. Oh, delightful. Juliet from her balcony could not have done it better. To the steps. To the steps. Anna, darling. Here we are. Dr. Rochelle. How nice to see you. Will you have an aperitif? Charles, ask Bruno to bring the tray. Not for me to question the findings of such a distinguished man as Dr. Rochelle. He says she's completely recovered. Well, indeed, yes. He could find nothing wrong. Then we can accept it and go back to London. Mr. Beauregard, I am sorry, but I cannot stay. Why, Collie? What's the matter? I came here as nurse companion. I am a competent nurse, but I have never been a companion. We have no mental contact. She's becoming increasingly withdrawn. But she seems happier than she has ever been for a long time. Do you know how much she talks to herself? Huh? Talks to her. I go into a room and I hear her holding a conversation. There's no one there. And often she laughs as if at some secret joke. Well, she'll be quite well when she takes up her old life in London. Can't I persuade you to stay? No, I'm too serious, too stolid. Mr. Beauregard, may I make a suggestion? Oh, by all means. Take Seraphine. Seraphine? It may sound strange, but Mrs. Beauregard likes her. And though she is rather a stupid girl, she has a peasant shrewdness and her work is good. But she's engaged to Bruno. Suggest three months' holiday. Bruno won't mind if she sends back money for the bistro. Uh, might be a good idea. I'll ask Anna. First ask Seraphine. She may say no. Collie, you may have the solution. Leave it with me. I'm most grateful. So I did well. Magnificently. Did I not say he would be captivated? He was convinced that I am entirely well. Oh, yes. Even now, Charles and the collie dog are talking it over in the study there. There's no doubt at all. We fooled them. Do not say that. Why? If we fooled them, it assumes deceit. That I'm not really well. And I am. I am well. And you are going back to London, to your home, your friends, your old life. What has happened here will fade like a bad dream. Bad dream? And am I coming with you? What are you talking about? Could I for one moment do without you? Certainly, if you wish. I do not wish, and don't speak like that. You said, you said forever. Forever. Or as long as you need me. Then never speak like that again. It is already forgotten. Look, here comes the young and lovely Seraphine. Upon my word, I do believe she's more beautiful than the fair as a wonder. She's infinitely more amusing. <laughs> Seraphine, Seraphine, are you coming to talk with me? Not now, madame. Monsieur has sent for me. Hello, hello. If monsieur wants a drink or a sandwich, it is for Bruno oh, to... No, madame. He has sent for me to his study. It is important. Do you know what it is? No, but... Oh, he will tell you. He has no secrets from you. Oh, excuse me, madame. I must not keep him waiting. Not now, what is this? He can send for his own maid if he wishes. Ah, but what are his wishes? Stop it. I was... I was relaxed and happy, and now you're putting ugly thoughts into my mind. If that is how you feel, I will say no more. Are you sulking? Not at all. She's in there now. What do you want me to do? Set your mind at rest, one way or the other. But, of course, if you do not want my advice... I did not say that. 
What shall I do? In the little study, she said. There is the window. It is only a few steps. I am to eavesdrop? You are to do exactly as you wish. What a repulsive idea. If you think so. You can always ask him later. If you think, he will tell you the truth. Be quiet. Certainly. I will go just for a moment and stand by the window. That is sensible. Up and lean on me. Uh, Such a few steps. Really, it is most convenient. She did not mean... No, oh, I know she did not. It was understandable. He annoyed her. And he is quite well. He begins to run quite fast again. Monsieur, if it is only about Blanc Blanc... Then... Seraphine, would you like to come to lunch with us? To England with madame. <laughs> yes, Miss Collier is leaving. Would you come for three months, perhaps? Had oh, madame asked for me? I must ask you first. And then we will say nothing until just before we leave. And I shall give oh, her... Oh, grand, please. Oh, monsieur, what a plan. Uh, about Bruno. Oh, there is no hurry for three months. And he wants to wait until he has a little. Ah, I see. Oh, monsieur, I cannot believe it. Three months in London with madame. Why, with you. Is it a big house? And how often do you come to it? Ha, ah, Gata. It is a small house, and I am there at night. What would be my work? Well, we have a lady who comes in each day to cook and clean. You would help her a little. And be a friend, madame. I'm away. I've heard enough. Oh, monsieur. I cannot bear it. Imagine. If you think... I've heard enough. I must sit down. Help me. My breath is going again. Yes, yes, there. Lie back. Now relax. Relax? Are you mad? Did you hear? In London, in my own house, it's, it's found. Do as I say. Do not grip me so tightly. Now a deep breath and another. Are you calm now? Quite calm. And after all, there is no problem. I shall dismiss her before he tells me. Tonight. It will be necessary for you to have a good reason. I will find one. Or I will have a fit of temper and scream. Oh, no, no, no. You will undo all the good we have done. Charles will go away and leave you here. I shall follow him. No, this will not do. It won't do at all. We must be completely subtle. I shall dismiss Seraphine. Seraphine shall dismiss herself. How do you mean? She will do something which will make it quite impossible for her to be near you again. Yes, that is good, but how? Tell me how. Quiet. There she is. Seraphine. Excuse me, madame. I... No, come here. What did monsieur want? No, it was a trifle. A message for Bruno. Why didn't he send for Bruno? Oh, Bruno is very busy, madame. Please, I must go now. <laughs> She is big with her secret. She could not face you. Now, will you hear the plan? It must be a good one. It has the perfection of complete simplicity, provided you play your part. What must I do? Tell me, tell me. Be still, then, and listen. Oh. No, you must sit quietly, or I cannot make it clear. I am quiet, and still. Good. Now, tonight at dinner, you must turn the conversation to the feds. This is the most important part from which we shall arrange everything that follows. Yes? You will stress all the excitement, the procession of the saint, the music, dancing, fireworks. You will emphasize that Rosamunda and Macaulay may never see such a sight again. Yes, yes, and then... You will calmly announce that you are not going. Not going, but... You will say it is too exhausting, that you can see the lights and hear the music in comfort from the far end of the terrace with a glass in your hand. Alone? I will not agree to that. You will not be alone. You will insist. If necessary, we will permit a touch of temper that you are left with Seraphine. Ah, how ecstatic the stupid girl will be with Madame watching the rockets roar up over the sea. Oh, Madame, look! Wait, and now it has burst apart and all the golden stars will fall. Oh, yes, yes. Is it not beautiful? Indeed, yes. And again, look. Uh, oh, my God. 
This is an enchanted evening. I'm so happy. Because of the fireworks? Oh, because I am here with you. I'm looking after you. Monsieur said I was to be in charge. Come and sit down and we will finish supper. Oh, I am too beside myself to eat. Oh, but you must, madame. Bruno has prepared this special meal. He would not be pleased if we did not finish it. Excellent. But for the moment, I've had enough. Oh, just a soupçon of the pâté. You made it with such care. And, oh, madame, there is a sobe to follow. It is ready in the refrigerator. A morsel, then. Thank you. And now we will have another glass of wine. Hey. There. Your health, Seraphine, to you and to Bruno. Thank you, madame. Madame, there is something I want to tell you. Yes, sir. Monsieur said I should not. Not yet, but I think I must because this is what makes me so happy. <laughs> yes. Let me fill up your glass. Oh, madame, I cannot keep it to myself any longer. <laughs> madame, I am to come with you to London. Seraphine. For three whole months. I know. <laughs> you know? He has told you. Oh, I am glad. Now I have not betrayed his confidence. Drink your wine. <laughs> oh, thank you. But I am having too much. <laughs> I think uh, I am a little drunk. <laughs> not in the least drunk. Now, we will drink to our pleasant time in England. Oh, no, madame. No more. <laughs> and do not forget, I have a special responsibility, apart from trying to give you a happy evening. What is this special responsibility? I am to see you take your tablets at ten o'clock. Who said? Monsieur. Always monsieur. He said, I trust you, Seraphine. Tonight you are important. Seraphine. See, si. here are the two tablets. Miss Collier gave them to me. Thank you. Put them there. And now I insist on you having another glass of wine. Oh, no, madame. Forgive me, but no. Seraphine, I do not wish to drink alone. Oh, then if madame will permit, I will fetch a citron. Madame must please understand. This evening, I am important. So much for your simple plan. What did you say? Found lying drunk and disgraced on Madame's bed. And Madame at the supper table, distraught and alone. It is nothing. Nothing. How can she be dismissed for being drunk if she will not drink anything? It is still simple. What lies by your hand? By my... Oh. The two pills in her citron. <laughs> Citron, indeed. And when she becomes dizzy, then one more glass of wine and lala up the stairs. I'm still not sure I can support her up. She must not be allowed to become completely senseless. And I will support you. Now, no more wailings. Are those pills strong? Taken with alcohol, they will work within minutes. Then we have nothing to worry about. Just think of her lying there. And with any luck... By the time they find her, she will be snoring. Here we are, madame. Now I may drink with you. Thank you, Seraphine. I, uh, I wish you well. Bonne chance, madame. Get her out of the way again. How? Use your intelligence. Must I do all the work? Oh, that is better. Now I can drink glass for glass with you and still keep the trust monsieur has placed upon me. Monsieur, always monsieur. Seraphine... What kind of sorbet has Bruno made? Oh, madame, it is exquisite. In the little glass dishes shaped like leaves. Apricot, madame, and when one reaches the center, there is the liqueur, the quattro. Delicious. <laughs> I think I'll have it. Uh, go and bring two of the little dishes shaped like leaves. Oh, yes, madame, at once. <laughs> oh, what a joyful evening. Bruno will be so pleased. She babbles like a cataract. You would have gone mad in London. Now, the pills and the citron. Stir, stir. Take the handle of the fork. It'll be quicker. My hand is shaking. It is perfectly steady. Now, are they dissolved? Yes, it looks quite clear. Then relax. One more glass of wine, if possible, and we should have achieved it. Oh, madame. Here we are, madame. Here we are. There and there. Are they not beautifully done? Delightful. I think you should be taking Bruno to London also. Monsieur says you have a cook. Yes, I was joking. Oh. 
I cannot wait to see so many things. Seraphine, drink your citron. There. I have drunk it. <gasps> oh, madame. Pardon. That citron was a little bitter. Then you must have one more glass of wine to take away the taste. Oh, no, madame, please. Seraphine, don't be difficult. One more glass will not affect you. And it will correct the acid of the citron. Now, drink it down at once. Oh, yes, madame. Well done. Now, tell me, what is it you want to see in London? The parks. I understand they are very beautiful. Yes, at the proper season. And, oh, madame, above all things... Yes? Above all things, I desire to see your queen. <laughs> That may not be so easy to arrange. Oh, monsieur will see to it. Monsieur can arrange everything. Ah. Madame, where are your pills? My, uh... I left them there on your plate. Uh, I took them while you were in the kitchen. But it is not... It's not yet ten o'clock. Oh, it's near enough. Oh! Sir, so, what is the matter? Oh, such a loud noise. Oh, madame... What is it? Suddenly, my head is turning. Uh... You are overexcited. Have some more wine. No, no, I've had too much already. I, I'm. Oh, what is happening, Madame? Madame. Quick, this is the moment. Oh. Seraphine, you must lie down. Oh, no, no. I... Upstairs on my bed. Oh, but uh... don't argue. Oh. Here, lean on there me. There was a maid said. Rest on me. On the stove. Put your free arm round her. She I will guide you to the stairs. Why am I? It's all right, Seraphine. I'm helping you. Steady now, steady. Just one foot after the other. Now, move her in front of you. Grasp the banister. That is it. And place my head against her back. So, and so, and up we go. I don't think that... I can do it. You can do it. Mm. A few more steps, well, um, and we are on the landing. My room is at the end of the corridor. We will go straight into the room at the top of the stairs. But that... Charles is dressing room. No. Not there. Do you not see? It is beautiful. Beautiful. She feels faint. She must lie down. And where does she go? Straight to Charles's mm. little room. Oh, yes. Where no doubt she has often been before. Oh, Come now. Uh, We're nearly there. She needs no guiding to the bed. Um, uh, 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 Lie down, Sophie. Uh, uh, there. Uh, uh, now you must rest. Uh, Quietly. Uh, Quietly. Uh, uh, oh. I'm glad that's over. I have no more breath. Well done. It is well done. Oh. See how she sprawls with her mouth oh. open. I do not wish to look. I'm going downstairs. Wait. It is not finished. What do you mean? Even lying like that, she is still young and desirable. Look how firm her bosom is. Ooh, how it curves. I... What if Charles will not dismiss her? Don't torment me. After all, what is one small lapse on the part of an excitable oh, girl? Stop, stop. We cannot stop What here. are we to do? Finish it. Finish it uh, once and for all. Now, do not speak uh, again. Listen to me. Listen. Slide your hand down my shaft and raise my head. Raise it. Am I firm in your hand? Yes. Look at her. Look. Now, strike. No. It is your chance. Strike. And strike again. No. No. Strike. I won't do it, I see now. You're evil. You forced me to this. Get away from me. Get away. You cannot release me. Uh, I am fast in your hands. I must break you. You have not the strength. Across the banister. That will need two hands. Without uh, me, you will fall. I must. Get to the stairs. You're holding me back. Oh, help me. Someone help me. 
You're pulling me down. On your knees. Oh. Crawl, then. Oh. Crawl. Drag you. Here, this is the rail. I must pull myself up. You cannot do it. Oh. And you are mad. Do you hear? Mad. I can do it. I will. I need the words. What is Father Martel say? The words. The words will come. Out of the dark. The words will come. Yes. Yes, the words. Light on our darkness. We beseech thee, O Lord. <laughs> by thy great mercy defend us. From all perils and dangers of this night. From all the perils and evils of this night. Now. Leave me. Leave me. In the name of God. Go! Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where is she? On earth, as it is on the terrace. Give us this happen. day our daily bread. Have left and forgive them. us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Therapy! And lead I us knew not it. into temptation. I knew it. Over here. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, Mr. Julius. Good morning, Monsieur. I have brought back the stick. Ah. I'm very sorry, but it's been very badly broken, splintered into two pieces. If it can be repaired, I shall, of course, pay. Uh, we will see, Monsieur. Uh, do you know exactly how it happened? Apparently, my wife went upstairs with the maid who had been taken ill. Seraphine, yes. Coming down the stairs, she lost her balance and put all her weight on the stick as she fell. Was Madame hurt? No, but... Deeply shocked. Mr. Julius, if I tell you, you will not repeat it. You may be assured of my confidence, monsieur. It was a little bizarre. Anna was huddled by the banisters. She was... was... Yes, monsieur? She was repeating the Lord's Prayer. As you say, a little bizarre. But one prays in time of need. I suppose so. And how is Madame now? She appears to be completely well again. Quiet and happy. Perhaps one may hope the dark time is over. Yes. We're selling the villa and going back to England. I'm going to buy a small house in the country, not too far from London. Anna seems to take pleasure in planning a garden. Now, that is a most excellent idea. So if you can repair the stick, it is still an unusual thing. And will let me have the account before we go. Uh, monsieur, one more thing. Yes? If the stick can be repaired, uh, does madame want it back? That is also strange. From the time we found her, she has never mentioned it. It is as if it had never been in her possession. And you will not mention it either, monsieur? We think it better not. And if she should ask, which I do not think, would you tell her it has been disposed of. I will do that. But it seems a pity. I'm sure you will repair it. You're a skilled craftsman. If I do so, monsieur, I will let you know. Thank you, Mr. Julius. Goodbye. Goodbye, monsieur. Go with God. I hope so. So, you are back, my friend. Again. But this time, someone has been too strong for you. I have been at fault, I know. I could never bring myself to destroy you because of your beautiful workmanship. But now, look at you. In two pieces with that ugly crack across your face. And one of your eyes gone from its hollow socket. At last, I am able to do what should have been done before. We will complete what Madame has begun. Pierre? Oui, monsieur. Is the furnace hot? 
It is roaring. Good. Open the door. Oh, monsieur. No. Stand back. It shall end here. Flora Robson starred as Anna Beauregard in A Voice in My Hand, a thriller by Charlotte Hastings, especially written for Dame Flora to appear in on radio on the occasion of a diamond jubilee in the theatre. Marius Goring was the voice. Charles was played by George Baker. Seraphine, Patience Tomlinson. Julius, Jack May. Miss Collier, Carol Marsh. Anthony, Gary Cady. Rosalind, Stella Forge. Bruno, Crawford Logan. And Father Martin was Michael Spice. A Voice in My Hand was directed by Graham Gould.